will be continuing with the discussion on telescopes. We have already completed simple microscope, compound microscope, and now we move on to telescopes. As I said at the beginning, telescope is of two types, refracting type telescopes and reflecting type telescopes. Okay, of which let us proceed with uh, the discussion on refracting type telescopes. Okay, so let us go ahead. Refracting type telescopes. So refracting type telescope, uh, there are two kinds, no, astronomical and uh, terrestrial. So we have to think of astronomical refracting type telescopes. So the, the discussion here is confined to astronomical refracting type telescopes. Basically, the uh, since it is astronomical uh, telescope, the object is at infinity. So here again, we have two lenses, eyepiece and objective. Objective is focusing towards the object which is at infinity. That means when you draw the diagram, uh, as I said before, uh, in the case of my uh, telescope, sorry, microscope, we have two lenses. Now, same way, telescope also two lenses, of which the first one is the objective. It's a convex lens now, and where the ob uh, object is, object is at infinity. So uh, the light rays are coming from infinity. It is passing through the optic center. So first one light ray you take through the optic center. Okay, let's say this is the light ray coming from uh, infinity, passing through the optic center, you know, it will go without any deviation. Okay, also you let us mark the position of uh, the focus. By the way, you should know that objective has to have a very long focal length. Okay, so very long focal length. So this is objective. Okay, always uh, here in the case of telescope, you should have an idea that focal length of the objective is greater than that of eyepiece. Okay. Another light ray you take. See, you know when light rays are coming parallel to the principal axis, only they will meet at the focus. Now here the light rays are coming Parallel to the principle, uh, parallel to each other, but they are not parallel to the principal axis. Not parallel to the principal axis means they will meet at a point on the focal plane. So you should draw here. It's on the same plane as the uh, passing through the focus. So only those parallel rays parallel to the principal axis will meet at the focal point or focus. Whereas those rays which are parallel to each other, but not parallel to the principal axis, they will meet where at the focal plane. Okay, at a point on the focal plane. So this is the point where they will meet. So we can draw the image over here. Okay, as a inverted image formed here at focus of the objective. Okay, I hope it is clear. Now you can place the next lens, which is eyepiece. But you know, eyepiece, as I said at the beginning, in each optical instrument, we should consider the case of the rays, sorry, the final image formed at the least distance for distinct vision and the final image at infinity. So first, let us say, first case, the final image is uh, at the least distance for distinct vision, that is D. Okay, this is, uh, these are the rays coming from the object, object is at infinity. So now, uh, let us draw the diagram. Let me take eyepiece. So when you position the eyepiece, you should be careful. As I said before, you should position it in such a way that its focal length should be, first of all, shorter than the other one. Okay, so because this lens is eyepiece, as I said, it is having shorter focal length compared to eyepiece. Sorry, compared to objective. So we can, and also, for an image to be formed at the least distance for distinguishing, the focus, uh, sorry, the, the image should fall, this let image be AB, that should fall between focus and optic center of the eyepiece. So this, let me take this as the focus of eyepiece. In my light ray, 
keeping AB as the object now. Parallel another ray through the optic circle. The parallel ray will go through the focus. And the ray from the optic, uh, through the optic center will go without any deviation. So we come to know that the rays diverge away from each other. You see, when you observe from here, you can see that the rays, if you extend these rays backwards, okay, they will be made to meet here, they will meet, they will meet, meet here. Okay, you extend them backwards. So you'll get a virtual enlarged image at this position. Virtual enlarged image is formed. So you should use a, a ruler to draw it straight backwards. So this is A dash B dash. This is the image. Image formed at a given distance from the lens. This distance is supposed to be the uh, least distance for distribution. Okay, so you may mark the distances. Obviously, object is at infinity. Image is AB. Okay, that image distance you can mark as VO. Okay, but that VO is nothing but a F only focal length of object because by image is at infinity. Whereas this is UE, UE, image distance for the sorry, object distance for the eyepiece. And image distance for right piece is this one. Okay. I hope it is clear. This is the case of ray diagram for the telescope, refracting astronomically refracting the telescopes when the final image is at infinity. So here this VE is what is nothing but the least distance for distribution, which is D. Okay. Now, as uh, we said before, the definition of magnifying power. We said magnifying power is the angle subtended by two angles. So, ratio of the angle subtended by the two angles. Uh, two ratio of the angles subtended. Two different angles. No. Magnifying, magnifying power. There are the two different angles, theta i and theta o. But here you should be uh, careful about the description of the two angles. Theta i is obviously the angle subtended by the image of the eye. Whereas theta O is the angle subtended by the object with I. Here object is at infinity. So we should mark this angle as theta O. And whereas theta I is the angle subtended by the image that A dash B dash with I. That is here. This is theta I. Okay. I hope it is clear for all of you. So theta I by theta O as I discussed before. It can also be written as tan theta I by tan theta O. So magnifying power is equal to tan theta i you can replace with a b by you take the small triangle okay now even if we de defined it with the with the big triangle or with the image uh, by similarity concept you are using the small triangle for finding tan, tan theta i a b by the distance is u e tan theta o is uh, by the way this is theta o, so here also the angle will be theta o, vertically opposite angles. So, a, b by what distance? It is f o, we said. So, that means magnifying power, we have the equation f o by u e. Let it be equation 1. Now, the next is for the eyepiece, we take the case of eyepiece alone now. Okay, 1 by f e because it is a convex lens, so you can use the uh, lens uh, equation 1 by f e is equal to 1 by v e minus 1 by u e. So 1 by u e is equal to 1 by v e minus 1 by f e. Fine. Now what else is? If you apply the sign convention for the quantities like v e and f e, v e is, I said it is least distance for distribution, but it is measured in the opposite direction of the emission rays, which is negative v. Explain it already in the other cases. So we'll write this as 1 by minus d. Okay, minus 1 by the focal length of eyepiece is positive only, 1 by fp. Okay, so 1 by v, 1 by fp, like that we'll write. 1 by d and 1 by fp. Okay, one second. 
Now, if you have a look at the derivation, what is done so far? Okay. So now I will take the negative sign common. 1 by ue is equal to negative of, and along with that, I am taking the uh, LCM of the two. Fp into d, Fp plus d. Because negative is taken common. Okay, therefore the equation 1 we can rewrite as the magnifying power m is equal to, look, instead of 1 by ue, you can write minus fp plus d by fp. So that fo I am writing here along with that. So fo by fp into fp plus d by d or minus fo by fp into we can rewrite this as 1 plus fp by d. So you can note down this equation. This is the final equation for magnifying power of an astronomical refractive telescope, astronomical telescope magnifying power. Got it? Okay. Now listen. So all of you have studied what is the description about the micro, simple microscope. Then we have seen the case of uh, uh, Compound microscope. In all the cases, we are discussing two two cases, two two special norms. Uh, one is about the final image at least distance for distant vision. Second one is the final image at infinity. Okay, so in both the cases, so simple microscope, we have taken two cases, compound microscope, two cases. Now we have astronomical telescope. In this also, we have to think of two cases. First case is where well, we already have uh, discussed that is the final image at least distance for distant vision. Okay. Next we have the case of final image at infinity. Have a look at the board. Fine. So have a look at the whiteboard. We'll uh, start with the same thing. See, I'll show you the previous diagram. We have discussed the astronomical telescope when the final image is at least distance for distinction. So in this, what all you have to take out, I will tell you, for the uh, derivation of the expression for the magnifying power of a, of the telescope. So two cases. So here, the diagram you should change this way. The final image is supposed to be at infinity, no? So that means, so, I'll take out these rays. Okay, so why I'm telling you uh, drawing like this is you should be able to make out which all rays you can retain. Okay. Principal axis, image at infinity. Okay, so this is the focus we have marked. Focus, sorry, focus of objective. Okay, the final, because the final image, is, uh, sorry, objective is at infinity, the image is formed at its focus. Okay, yeah. Now we may mark the next lens, that is eyepiece. But be clear, eyepiece should be, uh, you know, drawn, it should be positioned, such that should be positioned such, such that the light rays, the image so formed, no AB, that should fall at the focus of eyepiece itself. Be clear. We want the final images at, uh, to be at infinity, no? So that should be the focus of eyepiece also, where where the focus of IP uh, objective is. You know, this is the focal length of objective, okay? And this is the focal length of IP source. So, uh, if you consider this light ray, 
parallel ray after refraction will pass through the focus. Okay. Next, a ray through optic center will go parallel. Okay, that means these two rays are going parallel, that is they are going to meet at, they will be, the final image will be formed at infinity only. Okay, so now theta O it is already marked, final image is at infinity being at, at infinity, this is theta I. Okay, so all of you be clear, the point A, F O, F E, all should be at the, uh, at the same point itself. So now coming back to the derivation, magnifying power, tan theta i by tan theta o, tan theta i is a b by f o, sorry, a b by f e, tan theta o is a b by f o. But you know when you apply the sign convention here itself, because we are, that's it, we are, that, that's the end of the derivation, in fact uh, only these many steps are there. So here itself we are applying the sign convention. F O is positive basically, this is this direction, but F E is measured in this direction, no, opposite to the incident ray. So, F E will become, will be negative when you apply sign convention. So, the final answer is F O by F E. By the way, the negative sign is only indicating that the final image is inverted. Compared to we look, uh, object, the final image is always inverted. That is the meaning of negative sign in all the derivations, okay. But however, when you take the magnitude of the magnifying power, we'll take, take only the sign is not to be considered in the calculations. Okay, f o by f e. So we have calculated f o by f e as the magnifying power when the final image is at infinity. By the way, when the object is at object is obviously at infinity, but final image also when considered to be at infinity. I no, I forgot to write that. This is infinity. Okay, second case is what we are discussing. Final image at infinity. So when the final image is at infinity, this case. Okay, is what is also referred to as the normal adjustment. So normal adjustment is uh, the case when the uh, object is at infinity, final image is also at infinity in the case of telescope. Okay, so usually the case comes is about the normal adjustment. Normal adjustment case, the final image is at infinity. Is that clear? Okay. Fine. So, uh, by the way, from this equation itself, what do you understand is, look, the case of, uh, you know, this is the case, we previous derivation, we did the magnifying power when the, when the final image is at the least distance for distinction, that is capital D. Whereas in this particular case, if it is at infinity, the case of image formed at infinity, what is the situation is this D, you know, this D. This is, or you can replace with infinity. So in this infinity, what, 1 by infinity is 0, so you will get this equation, no, 1 by minus F, F O by, by F E. And uh, moreover, one more thing to understand is, you know, if L represents the length of the telescope, L is the length of the telescope, we can get even an expression for the length of telescope as well. Okay, so length of telescope is uh, represented by the letter L. You know, from the diagram we can make out it is nothing but F O plus F E. Length of telescope is F O plus F E. So, two equations we have related to the telescope, astronomical telescope at its normal adjustment, that means final image at infinity. One equation is uh, minus f o by f e and the other one is f o plus, m is minus f o by f e and uh, the length of telescope is f o plus f e. Okay, I hope it is clear. Actually, is one question I will uh, tell you associated with this itself. You just note it down. That is, uh, this is the question, uh, determine the focal length, focal length of the eyepiece and objective of an astronomical telescope. telescope of magnifying power, magnifying power 
uh, 8 and length 45 centimeter. So, note down this question. This is a question related to concept of telescope only. Okay. <clears throat> so, how to do this? Anyway, we are going along with my, uh, your pace. Okay. The magnifying power is given as 8 and length is given as 45 centimeter. We know that magnifying power is F4 by F3. So we can write 8 as F4 by F3, therefore F4 you can write as 8 F3. Similarly, length is equal to F4 plus F3. That is 45 is equal to 8 F3 plus F3, which is 9 F3. So we get F3 as 5 centimeter. Therefore, F4 is 40 centimeter. So, the two lenses have magnifying power. Sorry, the two lenses have focal length 4 centimeter, 40 centimeter and 5 centimeter. Magnifying power is 40, uh, 8 and length is 45 centimeter. Okay. I hope it is clear. Now, towards the last part, we have just two diagrams to complete. So, I mentioned about the reflecting type telescope. Reflecting type telescope is of two types. Okay. First is the case of the Newtonian telescope. Newtonian telescope. Newtonian telescope and uh, second one is what? The uh, what you call as Cassegrain type of telescope. So, in Newtonian type telescope, the case goes this way. There is a large concave mirror, concave mirror and uh, the light ray is you know it is coming from infinity. Okay, light rays are coming from infinity. You know the light rays from infinity are uh, going to meet at the focus. Basically, it will meet at the focus. But in the case of Newtonian type telescope, they are not allowed to meet at the focus. Instead, there will be a plane mirror kept on the way. Because this is a plane mirror, okay, kept on the way. This plane mirror will make the ray reflect back okay this plane mirror will make it reflect back okay then you know what will happen from this the ray will straight away go this way and from this it will be reflected this way so that means these rays will be meeting somewhere here so we'll keep a lens here okay using that lens we can view it through this we can view so this is how the ray is there okay this is the ray diagram of newtonian type of telescope also we have another one that is what you call as cassegrain type in cassegrain type of telescope again there is a concave mirror, large concave mirror, but only thing is that there is a small opening at the center. We can make it like this. Just I am drawing a ray diagram. So, because I showed you the uh, how actually Cassegrain type telescope looks like. Okay, along with the previous discussions, uh, I explained or just uh, showed the picture of a Cassegrain type telescope. So, this is the way the rays are coming from infinity. These rays will go towards the focus, towards the focus. So, unlike in the case of concave, uh, sorry, the, the Newtonian type of telescope, here what you, what you do is you are keeping a convex mirror. That is the basic difference. Here the mirror is plane mirror, okay. Here the mirror is convex mirror. So, this convex mirror, you, you will see that this convex mirror will make the light rays reflect like this and go straight in this way. It will meet here. Okay, it will meet here. So, this way it can be viewed from here. So, this is the discussion about reflecting type telescope. You just learn to, you need to learn the two ray diagrams. 
One is Newtonian type, second is Cassegrain type. Okay. Now, you know, when we talk about the two types of telescopes, that is refracting type telescopes and refracting type telescopes, obviously there are many advantages this refracting type telescopes possess. So, there are four points we can understand as the advantages of refracting type telescopes. When you talk about advantages of refracting type telescope, we should uh, mention it as over what? Over the refracting type. Actually, clear cut four points we have, we can say as advantages of reflect type telescopes. The first thing is, you know that uh, when, uh, when we discuss the case of mirrors, okay, in mirrors, there is a basic uh, uh, defect mirror can have that is called spherical aberration. So, spherical aberration can easily be eliminated with the help of a, uh, parabolic mirrors, with the help of parabolic mirrors. Whereas, what you observe here is, in the case of refracting type telescope, refracting type telescope, there are lenses. The lenses also possess parabolic, uh, sorry, spherical aberration, but that cannot be uh, minimized very easily. Okay, like in mirror, we said we can easily minimize with the help of a parabolic mirror. But in the case of lenses, it is not that easy. So, what is first advantage? The spherical aberration can easily be minimized. Spherical aberration can easily be minimized. That is one advantage. Second advantage, you know, for lenses only, there is a defect called chromatic aberration. That chromatic aberration is not there. That is in the case of mirrors, okay, in the case of uh, reflecting type, uh, type telescope, there is no chromatic aberration. There is no chromatic aberration. First one, uh, no, uh, the spherical aberration can easily be eliminated. And third point is, you know, uh, the light gathering is more in the case of mirrors. Otherwise, more light rays are getting reflected. As far as the refracting depth telescope is concerned, you know, the, the rays are passing through the lenses. So, what you observe is there are amount of light rays that they will absorb will be more. It means the brightness of the final image would be less in the case of refracting depth telescope. So, compared to ref a refracting type, we get a brighter image in the case of reflecting type. So, brighter image. That is another advantage. Finally, one more thing is, you know, think of lens and mirror. Lens, you can, to mount a lens, you know, it is only at edges you can mount it, you know, because both the sides we require. Whereas, mounting a mirror, we don't need the back side of a mirror, no, only front side you need. So, it can easily be mounted. So, means, can you, you can easily fix it. So, can easily be mounted. Okay, can easily be mounted. These are the advantages. So, advantages of reflecting type telescopes. Okay, number one, uh, spherical aberration can easily be eliminated. Number two, there is no chromatic aberration. Number four, number three, there is no, oh, what do you say, the, the image will be brighter. And number four, the mirror can or the reflecting type telescope can easily be mounted. So, dear students, we have discussed the concept of optical instruments, which is part of the chapter Ray Optics for the grade 12 CBSC. Once again, in optical instruments, simple microscope, a refracting depth telescope, sorry, simple microscope, compound microscope and refracting depth telescopes. In all the cases, we have seen two, two diagrams and the derivations related to magnifying power why two, two cases? Because of the position of the final image. We assume final image initially at the least distance for distinction, which is capital D, and uh, the, it can be at infinity also. So, these two cases, we have derived the expressions for the magnifying power as well. In the case of microscope and telescope, okay? And finally, we have uh, drawn the diagram of uh, reflecting type telescopes as well, okay? That's, for, that's it for today. And... Uh, we will meet another time with another chapter, okay. We will be dealing with, if, if you have any um, doubts or any questions, you can definitely comment on it. And of course, uh, if you want me to explain some other concepts in grade 12 physics, you can definitely get back to me, okay. Thank you for watching.